woman that really was a prisoner of hope. That no matter what happened to her, she was not going to be shaken from her mission, what she thought she was alive for, which was to preserve the ideals of this nation that she herself has never enjoyed and for the richness that others of us have enjoyed. And to me, it screams to some truth about America. And I don't want to, I don't want to project these onto Israel. But when I look at history, from the fall of the Second Temple of Jerusalem, starting the year 70, when Josephus gave advice to the Romans about how to take Jerusalem and said, withdraw your armies and you'll take Jerusalem. And there was a division within Jerusalem at that time that brought down the city because the Romans came, the Romans came and took the lead because of the fights that were going on. You can go to the Roman Empire. You can go to the Soviet Union. Great empires or nations don't fall simply because of external threats. Now I say that, I say that trepidation with Israel because there's people sworn to drive Israelis into the Dead Sea. But if you look at those historical uh, 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 data points, you see that great nations fail not because of external threats, because of internal corruption because of the failure of people to live up to their values and their ideals. So me, in the face of challenges, who the heck am I to ever despair when I have people behind me, historically, ancestors of mine, you and me as blacks and Jews, that have given up so much sacrifice to, to believe that one day their black child would graduate from Yale Law School, to believe that one day they might see a minority running legitimately for president of the United States, to believe one day that my child would have opportunities that I could it was a daring dream to dream of. So we have no right, any of us, no matter what tragedies we've experienced, to stop the march towards freedom that's going on right now in our world. Uh, a couple more questions. One more question, Barry. Barry says, Barry has spoken. <laughs> um, this is a lot of pressure, the last question. I know. <laughs> um, probably the most of it. Uh, the, um, you spoke a lot about, um, about hope, and, and obviously you are someone who is pro-Israel. Uh, we also heard beautiful um, uh, remarks about some of the uh, students on uh, traditionally uh, black colleges, leadership, and what they've done. But could you give us your own evaluation of um, the African-American leadership in the United States? And what do they, what is their feeling about Israel? And, uh, you know, because oftentimes I think locally, outside of New York, uh, we find that there is become a greater identification, not with the history of Israel um, and what Israel's become, but with the sufferings of the Palestinians without <coughs> any you know, really understanding of, of the history of Israel. So you comment on African-American leadership. Well, look, well, blacks are always going to be, um, as Jews are, I think, always going to be uh, some of the first to sign up uh, to address the suffering of others. And we shouldn't be afraid of that within the black community, within the Jewish community, within whatever community. But when it comes to justice for Israel and understanding any, any suffering in, within context, um, we, we need to be more vigilant than we're being right now. And I, and I, I, I look, the, the, the black community in many ways, I argue, um, I just was a speaker for the ADL's um, uh, annual dinner, and we always argue, I, I, every time I meet Abe Foxman, I always ask him about his, his, his studies of black anti-Semitism, and is it higher than American anti-Semitism as a whole? Um, we have interesting discussions, but if you live in the American world, there are streams within America and many of them are streams within the mainstream that are racist and that are anti or, or, or have anti-Semitism in them. So we have to always be on guard to vigilantly fight against those streams. Is there streams of anti-Semitism in, in, in African American life? Yes. Is there streams of, of racism or bigotry in Jewish life? Yes. So so my point is is not that's a given. The, the more important question to me is what are we who are uh, who are validly against that, what are we gonna do? And so within the black community, and I say this all the time, and you ask specifically about black leadership. First of all, this excites me like never before, because Obama is a raindrop compared to the storm that's coming of young black leaders around this country who have, are phenomenally qualified, phenomenally experienced. You're gonna see more black governors, you're gonna see more black senators, you're gonna see more African-American CEOs. This next generation is coming up behind my parents' generation incredibly qualified, incredibly competent, competent in making many moves. So my only hope is with, with, with that, and, th and so the tradi people, people like to think that one black person speaks for all black America, which is, which is so offensive to me in many ways. So I'm sorry, Jesse Jackson doesn't speak for, for me. Uh, Al Sharpton doesn't speak for me. Uh, um, um, it's just, it, it, there's as much diversity within the black community, dear God, as there is diversity within the Jewish community. Uh, 
two Jews in the town got three synagogues. Okay, <laughs> so so that's that's the reality that there is. So the only thing I can say is that this next group of, of African Americans are very visionary, very much full of hope, very value based, as I know them. Harold Ford's, Arthur Davis's, and many other people that the APAC knows. And the only thing I think that look, I think that APAC what is it's critical that you find that you continue to find not them when they're Congress people. You find those black leaders when they're 22 year olds at Oxford, uh, when they're 24 year olds as a, as a city council president, and you go to them then and say, "Come to Israel. Let us let us let us start showing you what this is about." That's what a, a, a key mission of APAC that you must continue, which is finding future leaders, young leaders in America. I know, I'm at the Aspen Institute. They've done a great job. They have this young leaders group. That whole group should go to Israel. Um, um, these are the kind of things that need to be done for ultimately for us to combat that. But please, I, I appeal to Jews all the time, please do not think that there are, that just because such and such a black leader come, gets up there, whether it be uh, a, a Reverend Wright or whomever, and says something stupid, like many leaders period do, uh, and, 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 and spread that around to the, to the, to the, for, for the entire black community, as much as Jews would never want to be held responsible for everything, she will look out. Thank you very much.